Hey guys, welcome to lesson 12 where we are going to tackle two different types of loops. So hopefully now you're a little bit more comfortable with the for loop because we're going to be learning about the while loop and the do while loop today. So if you look at what we did for lesson 11 in this first part right here, we started with three and we kept incrementing and adding together numbers until J was 79 and we printed out the total sum. So we're going to do that exact same thing, except we're going to use a different style loop. So open up a new Java project and a new Java class, and I'm going to close out that up here. You don't really need it. We know what we're going to do. Now, very similarly to the other project that we looked at, we're going to initialize sum and set it equal to zero. And we're just going to say j is equal to 3 up here. So instead of setting that in our loop in our expressions, we're going to set it up here. So the first thing that you need to know about while loop is the initializing expression is not in the loop. It's outside the loop. So anything you initialize is done outside the loop. So now we're going to come down and say while. And I'm going to do open close parentheses. And this is going to contain our control expression. Set this in the loop. So remember, we're summing all the numbers between 3 and 79. So as long as j is less than or equal to 79, this control expression is going to run. Now, another thing you could do is if you didn't want to say less than or equal to, you could just say less than 80 because we're dealing with ints and the number less than 80 is 79. All right, so for while loops, you're just going to have the control expression. So like for loops had the initializing, the control, and the step expression. While loops only have the control expression inside parentheses next to it. So just like with the for loop, underneath you're going to have brackets. And I just love Eclipse because it automatically puts in my closing brackets for me and I don't even have to think about it. And it's all formatted and lovely. Ah. So now we come into our loop and we set up some of our code. So we're going to keep that running sum total of adding together the numbers from 3 to 79. So we're going to say sum equals sum plus j. Remember, because sum starts at 0, it's going to be 0 plus 3. So sum's going to become 3. Now we have our initializing, we have our control. Now we need to tell J what to do each time. So we need to increase J with each loop. So we're going to put that right in the loop, J plus plus. So we're going to put the step expression. OK, so the step expression goes right in the loop. So now J is going to be 4 when it resets. And it's going to keep doing this all the way until J is no longer less than or equal to 79. So let's take a look at what this does. So come outside the loop and we're going to do system.out.println and we're going to print the sum and make sure that our calculations are correct. All right, so 3,157, which is exactly what we got before, which is great. I'm going to change sum to j and see if we get 79 or if we get 80. We get 80. So what happens is this code will run until J reaches 80 here. And once it hits 80, it exits the loop and it'll print 80. All right, so I'm going to come up above here and I'm going to say while loop so that we know exactly what this does. OK, so let's go over just the skeleton of the while loop. So first things first, the initializing expression comes before the loop even starts. Then you say while with the control expression and no semicolon. Then inside your curly brackets, you have whatever code you write. And then the step expression is the last thing that's going to be in your loop code. So you can see it has some similarities to our for loop. So the for loop, the initializing, the control, and the step expression were all part of our actual code for it. Whereas this, it's kind of broken up a little bit. They do very similar things. So 
The for loop and the while loop are mostly interchangeable, just depending on which style you like better. You will have to be able to recognize both of them, especially if you're taking the AP um, and, you know, for tests and whatnot in the class too. But like in real life, if you're writing code, really the for loop and the while loop are similar enough that you could use them basically interchangeably, but you will need to recognize them in case you're do working with someone else's code. You're now ready to move on to the second video for lesson 12.